We got all nines in our sciences GCSEs, and we're going to show you how you can do it too. We'll talk through the specific revision techniques that we use to achieve all nines in our sciences, the best resources to utilize, the specific things to look out for during a revision so that you can reach your maximum potential. You'll want to watch to the end, as we have a secret method which we use to predict the content which came up in our actual GCSE, which no one ever talks about. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll get straight into it. Getting a 9 in science GCSE is mainly about learning and understanding content, and also developing good exam techniques. So how are you going to remember all the content without needing to study 50 hours a day? You're going to need some good revision techniques. Don't be that guy who reads through the textbook once and calls it a day. That does not count as revision. Not only are you not retaining their knowledge, you're tricking yourself into thinking that you have revised the topic, when in reality, you know nothing. So let's talk about the best ways to actually revise for the sciences. Since the exam style is quite similar for all three subjects, most of these methods can be applied across all three subjects. So if you found the most effective one, you can stick to it. Firstly, flashcards. There's a lot of memorization involved in the sciences, especially when it comes to definitions. Definition questions should be free marks, as long as you know them. But explain questions can also have formulaic answers, which easily go on flashcards too making them an effective way to ensure knowledge retention. Have the question on one side and a concise answer on the other, with the mark scheme specific keywords included. When you use flashcards to help you with your memorization, you should take into account what's called the forgetting curve. Immediately after learning something new, you'll start to forget it really quickly, which is completely normal. So at this stage, you'll need to constantly review your flashcards in order to refresh your memory every couple of days. Later on, your memory will have crystallized more, so you won't have to go over your flashcards as often, maybe once a week. Secondly, blurting. Read and digest a few sentences or even a paragraph of notes and then store it in your head. Then cover up your notes and write down as much as you can from memory, trying to include the key words and phrases. After that, look at your notes and fill in any gaps if you miss anything. This way, you have actually engaged your brain, comprehending what you're reading and in the process, storing this knowledge in your head. Another useful technique is the Feynman technique, which involves trying to teach a topic to a friend or a sibling. Finally, the best and most important revision technique, past papers. It is so effective and here's why. Let's think about it. It basically combines all the revision techniques into one. Flashcards? Past paper questions literally ask you the question and you have to answer it. The mark scheme's right there to check if you got it correct. Blurting? Covered. After reading through your notes, Doing past paper questions sorted by topic will force you to apply your knowledge without looking at your notes. If you've missed anything, the mark scheme will reveal it, and you should make sure to highlight this in your notes. How about the Feynman technique? Effectively, you're being forced to teach the paper you're writing on, answering whatever question it asks. Past papers replicate the real exam with similar question styles and with the necessary keywords in the mark scheme, making it the ideal practice. Of course, past papers don't completely replace the other revision strategies. Flashcards are useful for quickly sorting content into two piles, one you know well and one that needs revision, so you can focus your efforts on the content you're struggling with. Blurting is especially effective if you don't know the content yet. Doing a practice question at that point would be a struggle, and a waste of time and resources, especially if you don't know what the question is asking. The Feynman technique works well because you're teaching to a real person, and you can have an interactive conversation about the topic at hand, probing each other to have a deeper understanding. But if you're short on time, and you could only pick one revision technique, do past paper questions. Now that that's out of the way, let's rank the best revision websites and resources for the sciences. Using a tier list. Firstly, free science lessons. We'll put them in C. Ooh. This might be a controversial take, but hear me out. You've probably seen his videos on YouTube, but we don't think they're the best. The videos don't always cover all the content needed, often leaving out the harder parts of certain topics, making it a struggle for you to understand the harder questions in the paper. It might be enough if you're just aiming to pass, as the videos are at least concise and include some keywords that you need. But for a safe grade 9, it won't be enough. He is an icon then. Next, Physics Online. Definite S tier. This is the website that we mainly use to achieve our grade 9s in physics. It's a shame that it only covers physics, but this only makes it a better specialised resource. We reached out to them, and luckily for you guys, they have kindly sponsored this video. On the website, which we'll leave in the description below, you can find practice papers, the perfect way to maximise your chances for a grade 9. 
And with the discount code FUNSIES, all caps, you can get five whole pounds off a set of 12 physics practice papers, six each for paper one and two, including, of course, the mark schemes and work solution. All of this costs less than 30 pounds with the discount code, cheaper than one single tuition session. Physics Online also has a bunch of free videos on the website, as well as a premium plan, which allows you unlimited access to every resource on the website, including engaging, interactive, visual demonstrations, and detailed videos and explanations for any topic that you can think of and that could come up in your exam. These videos are perfect for taking notes and to combine with all the techniques we've mentioned. Again, you can use the discount code FUNSIES, in capital letters, for both the past paper set and the premium plan. So make sure to check it out in the description below. They are genuinely brilliant. Next up, Cognito. Cognito is a website and YouTube channel that I would highly recommend, S tier. Firstly, they have a website which is quizzes, flashcards, and importantly, practice questions. They also have many videos with cool visuals and animations going through most of the topics in the syllabus for free, covering most of the content that you need to know, which you can watch when you need to take notes or just try to understand a topic. Unfortunately, they don't have any required practical videos, so actually, we might have to drop them down to an A. You'll have to rely on Physics Online for physics practicals and other YouTube videos for chemistry and biology. Next, CGP Guides. S tier once again. Slightly different. <laughs> Next, CGP Guides. S tier once again. Slightly different style here, being a physical revision guide. They have keywords underlined, which helps you easily identify the important words that you need to include in your notes and in the actual exam. The guys are also quite colourful and lively, which is an extra benefit, as hopefully they will not be so boring to read. These last three are as good as it gets. Just try to incorporate a mixture of these in your revision. Especially physics online. Seneca, B tier. Similar problem to free science lessons, just a bit less passive. Might be good if you're really, really struggling, or maybe as a warm-up, but it simply doesn't have enough depth for getting a 9. I hated having to work through my Seneca homework the most basic multiple choice and fill in the blank questions, not learning a single thing. It might make you feel good about yourself answering some questions correct, but it's not going to ensure that you get that nine or even above the seven. Don't be this lazy and challenge yourself with harder questions. Practical questions are worth a large chunk of your marks. So how do you know which ones to focus on? Start by noting down the required practicals for the exam from your specification. Look through recent past papers and if a practical hasn't come up in a few years, will be more likely to appear in your paper. We're not saying that you can just ignore all the practicals that came up recently, even if it came up last year. Don't risk that. Make sure you've at least looked over all the content in the specification before going into the exam. But do you have priorities? And you know, if it's the morning of your exam and you're panicking, just look through that one practical that hasn't come up in like four years. This video is getting a bit long, so stay tuned because we'll be making a separate video for exam technique for GCSE sciences. Make sure to subscribe for that and leave any questions in the comments below.